Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Snook Down Farm and um, uh, another episode of building this farm. Um, we come very close to finishing the farm. Um, regarding the comments, a few of you said yep we still need drain pipes and guttering. Well some material has arrived so we can focus on that and get that done before we permanently um, fix the building in place. So what we'd like to do in this episode is finish off the farmyard itself, uh, get a start on doing this, putting a hard standing in, a uh, concrete base or road and muddy it up. Um, as you can probably see it's not very big. Let me just put this um, new Land Rover in place. So you put that in place and there's just barely enough room to turn the vehicle around. So, yeah, we can put uh, a few details in there. Um, one of you suggested maybe a chicken coop. Yeah, we could probably fit something like that round down the side there. Maybe some, uh, put a little chicken coop in that area. But here, just under this uh, tree, maybe put um, a couple of fuel barrels um, so the farmer can fill his tractor up. Um, yeah. So yeah, as you can see, we have a new Land Rover. It's mo much more in keeping. Obviously, he's got uh, his canvas top at the moment because he's got a box in there in the back of his uh, Land Rover. I'm not sure what's in that box. But yeah. It's quite fitting for the period. And as for the the A35, I think that will belong to the farmer's wife. Um, one of you su suggested that, so yeah. So that's what we're going to do this week is to concentrate on the the road here. Get that painted in, blended in, put in a hard stand in, and basically finish off this area completely uh, before we move on to this area. Um, this area yet again, uh, I think I mentioned this before, it's not very big but um, let's just see what we can get in there. So it's time to crack on as they say. So in order to create the farmyard itself I'm just going to use a sheet of 320 grit uh, sandpaper because um, the texture hopefully when it's painted it will look similar to concrete so we shall see how that turns out so I'm just going to place the building onto that sheet and then draw around it and then take it over to the bench and cut it to size I've just placed the building on top of the sandpaper just so I can um, mark it out um, for the actual yard itself. Um, as you can see I've marked out for the, the step that's up against the gate there and basically that's where the building is going to stay. Um, so yeah, uh, what I'll probably do, I'll probably cut along that road edge and then start the yard from that corner there, so that there would be the road. I just draw that there as well. That's it. That's it. So it looks like the road. I'll probably cut across there and blend the polyfiller in with the the concrete. So we shall see on that score. And you probably noticed that the building is now finished. Um, we have guttering. We have downpipes. We have the lid flashing um, running down that edge of the apex window and of course one finer last detail is the aerial for the TV. Yeah it's just been fitted. Um, the poor lad was complaining that uh, the reception is not very good. So his dad has a uh, Got Telefusion out to um, put an aerial up, so <laughs> that's my last little bit of detail, I think. 
um, for the building. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to draw around the yard area here, and obviously that building will drop down um, a little bit as well once this is glued in place. So. Right, so here we are. We're back at the bench, and I've cut the shape out for the farmyard. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide this up into sections where we'd have joints in the concrete. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to the edge of where the house is, just folding that over. So that would be one joint. And let's just say from the edge of the house to the edge of there, there's another joint. So I'm just folding it up to that line. So we've got four there, four there, four there. So that's three um, um, joints in the concrete. So I want to probably put another joint in there as well. Right, so now we've got our joints. So we've just got to now highlight them to make sure that they stay um, highlighted when we come to do the painting of the concrete. So I'm using the back edge of this blade and you can see it, I just want to leave some lines in the concrete. Hopefully they will show up when we weather them. Do the same there. Now obviously we'll want some cracks in the concrete as well so we'll have to do some of those. So let's just say there's a crack starting from that joint. Here, say so. you can see what I'm, I'm doing there, and uh, we'll, we'll put another one in here yeah, again using the back edge. So I'm getting rough right here. So, right, so we'll do. We can start painting now. I'm not sure about this at the moment. See how we get on. As you can see the cracks there, that's good, it's a good sign. Right, so I'm just spreading the paint about. So this to me looks like concrete when it's first poured, when it's this greenish greyish colour. So this is just going to be the, the base coat. So doing one section at a time, I'm adding the light grey to the dark grey. And then as soon as I've done this area, I shall notice I'm not going too far up to the I'm just going up to the joints in the concrete. I'm going this way and then I'm going that way. And what I'll do is I shall dab that off with a towel take some of that paint off. And 
So I'll leave that like that. And as you can see, the cracks are coming through that we did earlier. See that it's coming through. And I like the look of that. I like to see what that looks like um, when it's dry before I start adding the weathering colours and uh, the um, tyre wears, that sort of thing. I'm not too worried about the edges because the edges are going to be like a blackish green which I'll paint around the edges. So I'm just painting one little bit at a time. And I'm taking that off. Yeah, that's looking that's looking good, I like that. As you can see, I've added some green and brown to go around the edges. Um, obviously, once this is in place, I will add some foliage to go around the edges. So, that's just there, just in case um, any foliage misses, and you can see some brown underneath. So, what I'm doing now is just Going over the cracks ever so lightly, just so that uh, they do appear in the concrete. I'm just uh, not pressing overly hard, just very lightly where the cracks were. And there was one more there, I think. There it is. Right, so look, this is what it looks like at the moment. Obviously there's still some weathering that I will do in situ. So now it's time to glue this to the layer. I have left the yard overnight and it's dried out quite well. I like the fact that the cracks have come through as you can see there it did take a bit of an effort to get the sandpaper to stick to the actual baseboard so maybe in future I might have to use a different glue maybe use some yoohoo glue or something but uh, yeah so having the two vehicles there really shows you how small this yard is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some walls. So obviously at this edge here I'm going to put a, um, a wall this side and that side and with some capping stones as well. So that will finish that off and I'll she'll carry that along all the way through to here as well. And I will add a wall in there. Um, as for the front of the farms farmer's house uh, I might just add a metal railing fence along there with a gate and then bring it back to this corner and this would be green foliage and then we'll just paint the road in and then we'll shall see what it looks like so I shall crack on and we'll shall see what it looks like when it's done right as you can see I've moved on a little bit and added all the walls all the walls are now done I've made them in the usual way, just by using some 2 mil card, back to back, and then cover them with some Metcalf sheet. Um, it's basically for quickness, really. Uh, as you can see, I've added a gate here. So obviously, once the, the road is painted, and uh, I can now add the, the gate once that's uh, done. And um, there's going to be another gate over here, so that will lead into the orchard. So this is going to become an orchard. So I'll have a couple of more trees to go into this area here to finish that off. So we've um, almost ready to paint this road. So what I'll do is I'll paint this section and then add the well, tracks, if as you were, for 
the turning of the vehicles and going into the bar. I still have a little bit of greenery I want to do there first. Um, greenery and some stones. Uh, that's at the back of the building. So yeah, I'll have to do that first. And then I'll add some little paving stones along here. And then we'll have a wrought iron fence I'd like to put along there. Just to, just to break things up a little bit, because I think that would work. Have a little black fence along there with a gate, uh, which will go into the farmhouse. So yeah, we're moving on. Okay, so that's the road done, and uh, you've got quite a good view from here all the way up to the... Um, main gate at the, at the back there so yeah and it does look pretty dirty and grimy on this side just like a, a proper farmer's yard as it were uh, but this side will be yeah some livestock and hopefully some sort of barn where I can store the vehicles as you will see as we move on and uh, I've put in a few slabs along there so that's the Metcalf slabs and I've also added some marks onto the concrete here. So now I'm just going to add the greenery along this piece and this piece down this edge here where that pencil line is. And hopefully that will finish it off. And uh, then we can put the building back. Obviously I'll add some greenery and stones along there between the farmhouse and the wall and uh, yeah then we can put the farmhouse in place I think that's the main thing I need to get done this week is to get that farm building wired up uh, and fitted in place I have changed my mind regarding the iron railings in front of the farmhouse. I think um, it would not have looked right. I think iron railings should really stay in the towns and uh, I think this has given it a more natural look as you can see. So yeah, I've changed my mind there. So we're now actually fitting the capping stones uh, in the usual way like we've done here. Um, with the coffee stirring sticks cut with a uh, razor saw uh, in 5mm segments and then later on once the glue is gone off we can then paint them with the three various colours yellow first to represent the limestone and then the green and the black to represent um, well the ageing of the capping stones as you can see uh, throughout this model railway um, it's a good technique it gives it a little bit of realism and it kind of works right at last I've finished the walling um, just got to wait for the paint to dry uh, I had to run a new cable um, for the lights of this farmhouse because the cables that I'd fitted to the farmhouse weren't quite long enough so I had to put a new spur in but uh, that, that'll come in handy for other lighting in this little area if I decide to add any lights even in this area here if I have to put a signal box in there or or something like that but um, yeah so we've permanently fitted the farmhouse to the baseboard now and um, as you can see the lights are working and we can see right into uh, the barn there we can see the tractor which is good I mean that there's a whole point of um, sticking the tractor in the in the barn it's just, just just have a glimpse of it and we can see a brush up against the wall um, as for seeing any of the detail in the room, let's have a look. We'll try that middle window and we're just going to see what we can see. We can see the fire click 
there flickering away quite nicely but I don't think I can get the camera in close enough to see what's in the room not at this angle so let's have a look see if we can zoom in through the window and see what we can see mm. Yeah, we can just about make out the sofa at this angle, but uh, not the TV, which is a shame, but we know it's in there. The flickering LED for the fireplace has worked out really well, and then we can see the, the fireplace there and the floorboards. And I just can't get the camera in close enough to to see what else we can see because of the angle but uh, never mind we know it's in there so we've done quite well this week um, with the hard standing for the farmyard and the road and um, the decision to change for flower beds instead of railings has really worked out quite well I do like this scene especially when we come down to this level the ground level and changing the Land Rover as well that was a yeah it fits in quite well so I think that is all from me this week there's still other little bits and pieces I want to do to the farm building there's a little bracket I want to make to go up there so it might have had a, a, a tiny crane hanging over the side at one point but if I put a rusting bracket on there and then it'll look like it would have had one so there that's all from me I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen it's been interesting to um, actually do some work on the baseboard rather than sitting at the bench and uh, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so that's all from me now thanks again for watching and we'll see you again next time bye for now bye